Hello everyone, Phoenix Game here, and welcome back to another Minecraft PE Redstone tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how to build a secret room underneath a clock. Now, I've already done this on console before. If you would like to check out that video, if you're playing on console, I'll have a link to it in the description below. So right here, we have a clock, and when we go inside of our clock, to access our secret room, all you have to do is turn this block inside the item frame. So when we turn it, as you can see, nothing is happening because this clock has a lock to it. Now, when the clock is set to 12 o'clock, as you can see, this clock is in the perfect direction inside this item frame. If we even move it over once, the clock is now unlocked, and we can go ahead and access our secret room now. So, if we come in here, flip over this block, we will be transported down into our secret room, or our bat cave, if you want to call it a bat cave, because in Batman, he did go through his clock to get into his bat cave. Now, when you are down inside your secret room, you can go ahead and lock it up behind you, so no one knows anything is there, of course. And then, of course, when you're ready to leave your room, all you have to do is flip the lever up once again, walk into the clock area, flip that block over just one time, and then you'll be transported back up top like nothing was ever there. So, boop, 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 transport it back up top, close the door, and then, of course, put your clock back in its lock motion so no one can access it. All right, guys, so here's what the build looks like when it is completely stripped of everything but the redstone. Here is the lockout switch right up here for your clock. So, once we click this over once, as you can see, it will unlock the build. And then if we flip this right here, it will then retract the slime blocks all the way down into our secret base. And then, of course, if we want to lock it, all we have to do is flip down this lever and it will lock it up. However, once we're ready to leave, and also right up here, if you come up here, as you can see, it is completely locked. It won't open up or close anymore. But when we're ready to leave, all we have to do is flip up this lever right here. Click this over once again, and we will get transported back up top. And then we all have to do is flip this back to 12 o'clock, and then it will be completely locked up once again. So let's go ahead and start building this thing. All right, guys, for this build, you're going to need a five by five spacing, and you're also gonna have to dig down eight. Now that red stained clay block right there is the exact spot where your clock's gonna be going. Now the resources you're going to need for this build are five sticky pistons, three droppers, one hopper, two observer blocks, two redstone comparators, four redstone repeaters, one redstone torch, 15 redstone, one lever, five slime blocks, 11 immovable objects. We're gonna be using obsidian, one slab, two item frames, one clock, one gold block or yellow block, really doesn't matter, and three doors of your choosing. I'm gonna be using two spruce and one jungle. Once you have your five by five spacing, dug down your eight and gathered up all your resources, come to the bottom left-hand corner of your build, and we're gonna count over one block, one, and then we're gonna count up one block, one, and then we're gonna take out our sticky pistons and place three sticky pistons going towards the back of our build. So one, two, three, Next up, take out your slime blocks and place three slime blocks along the sticky pistons. One, two, three. And then right off the front sticky piston, we're gonna come up two more slime blocks. One, two. Now that is going to be all of your slime blocks. Now what you're going to need is a block of choice. This is gonna be the color of the flooring for your clock. So I'm gonna be using a spruce wood planks. You can use whatever color you like for your clock. However, I'm gonna be using spruce wood. So boop, there we go. Now it's time to send power to these pistons to make the up and down function work. So what we're going to do is swing over here to the backhand side of the build, and we're going to place a block down right here off the back sticky piston. Next, place a piece of redstone on top of that block. Then right next to it, we're going to come up two blocks. One, two. Come down a block next to the sticky piston. Next, take out your repeaters and place a repeater going into this block, like so. And then set it to four ticks delay. Then behind the repeater next to this slime block, we're going to place one of our obsidian blocks with redstone on top of it. Come down a block and place another repeater going into that obsidian block on four ticks delay as well. So one tick, two ticks, three ticks, four ticks. Place two blocks behind that repeater. One, two. Place a piece of redstone on top of that block. And then obsidian block next to the middle slime block right here. And that's going to be your whole entire up and down function. So if we place a lever right here and flip it down, it will go all the way up. And then when we flip it up, it should retract all the way back down. Next up, we're going to do the inputs for the item frames and also part of the clock. So go ahead and flip down your lever and make sure it is completely extended up and flush to your floor. Then we're going to come right behind this block right here with another block of choice for our clock. And we're going to place an observer block facing backwards towards the back of our build. Next up, take out an item frame and place it right off that observer block. 
Place another block of choice for your clock right above your observer block. Another one above that and another one to the left and then make sure you break this block right here. Next up, take out your item frame and place an item frame off the front. This is where your clock's going to be going. And then take out your redstone comparator and place a redstone comparator coming out of that block right there. Next, swing right back over here. And right in front of this comparator, we're going to place in a slab upside down. Place redstone on top of that slab. A block to the left-hand side of the slab with more redstone right on top of that block. Then coming off the side of the block, we're going to place our redstone torch. Then we're going to come right underneath our redstone torch and come down two blocks from here. One, two. Break the middle block. Then on top of this block, we're going to place in redstone. It should come on thanks to our redstone torch. Then we're going to swing underneath the block that has the redstone on it and place a sticky piston facing inwards towards your build. It should extend out. So place it right here. It should extend out. Then in front of that sticky piston, place in a block. And that's going to be our lockout switch for our build. It will make it so this can't go up or down. Next, take out your sticky pistons once again. And right in front of that observer block underneath this slab, we're going to place a sticky piston facing downwards. Then take out your observer block for the last time. Swing over here to the right-hand side of the build. And place your observer block facing away from your lockout switch. Now it is time to add in our T flip-flop. We are going to need our droppers and our hoppers for this. Make sure you pick droppers and not a dispenser or it will not work. So right here off of this block underneath your observer block, we're going to place a dropper facing towards the front of our clock. Then right in front of this dropper, we're going to place a dropper facing downwards. So what I like to do is place a block right here, right underneath it, like this. And then come right here, go into sneak mode, and place your dropper facing downwards, like so. Make sure you break these two blocks, or else it will break the build. Then last but not least, we have to place another dropper going into this dropper right here. So what I like to do is place a block right off this slime block. Come right here, look up with your dropper. And place in a dropper facing upwards. See how mine's facing sideways like that? We don't want it looking like that. We want to make sure it's facing upwards into this dropper right here. So upwards like that into the dropper. Next up, what we're going to do is go ahead and break this block. Come back over here and place a block right here. Come over here. Take out your hopper. And place a hopper going into that bottom dropper by going into sneak mode. As you can see, my hopper is funneling into that dropper. And this will make our T flip-flop. So to make sure our T flip flop is working, we're going to go ahead and place a piece of redstone right in here. Place one piece of redstone, nothing more, nothing less. And then right in front of our observer block, we're going to place a piece of redstone in like this. Next up, make sure we break this block over here. Like I said, any blocks over here will break the build. I'm going to swing over here to the inside of our build and right underneath our lockout switch block, we're going to place in an obsidian block. Place another obsidian block down from that next to the slime block. And coming out of your obsidian block, we're going to go ahead and place in a redstone comparator like so. Now we're going to check to see if our T flip flop is working. So we're going to come back to the front and inside of our top item frame, we're going to place in our clock. And then inside our bottom item frame, we're going to go ahead and place in our block of gold or a yellow block or whatever block you really want to place in there. Next up, switch this over to turn off the lockout switch. So now we know our lockout switch is working. And now we're just going to test to make sure that our T flip flop is working. So you'll know it's working if that comparator over here comes on. So we're going to flip this over once. Boom. And as you can see, our redstone comparator came on. That lets us know that it is working. And then if we flip it over one more time, it will turn it off. So for right now, we actually want this on. So go ahead and flip it once. Make sure it's on. And then go ahead and turn this back over to its locked state. That means this piston will be extended out. Now it's time we hook up this to the bottom of the build. Add in our lockout switch for the bottom. And we will be completely done. So to hook up our comparator to down here, all you have to do is come out one block, place a piece of redstone off that block, then come underneath this block, placing a block right here and a block next to it. We can break the block right here. It's not needed. Then coming out of the block with the redstone on it, we're going to place a repeater facing towards our lever over there. So place a repeater going that way. It should come on. Next up, we're going to place two blocks up in front of this repeater. One, two, and a block underneath that. Next, break the middle block, and inside this middle spacing, we're going to place in a piece of redstone. The redstone should come on, thanks to that repeater. Now it's time we broke that lever down there because it's no longer needed. So we're going to break this lever and make sure you pick it up because we are going to need it for later. Next, we're going to place a block right here with a piece of redstone on top of it. 
and it will reactivate our build. Now it's time to add the lockout switch for the bottom. So come back over here to this corner and we're going to come up one block from here and we're going to place in a piece of redstone. Next, place a block of choice. This is the walling you're going to have for the bottom of your build. I'm going to be using quartz. You can use whatever color you like. So place your block of choice right above this redstone and place your lever off the block. Now we can lock it out from the bottom. However, we need to lock this right here as well so people can't access and turn off the lockout switch. So to do that is actually quite simple. Let's go ahead and flip our lever up, come right behind it, and we're going to place a block up right next to this block right here. So one and two, just like that. And then coming out of our block of quartz, we're going to place a repeater going that way. So placing your repeater. So when we flip down our lever right here, the repeater should come on. So let's go ahead and just flip up this lever for now. Take out your blocks. And now all you have to do is just bring the power from the repeater up to this piston right here. So all you have to do is just make a staircase of blocks up to our piston. So place two blocks here. One, two. One, two. And then place redstone right along it. One, two. And as you can see, it hooks right to the piston. So now we can completely lock it from the bottom so if i went over here and unlocked it right from there i can easily lock it back in by flipping down this lever so let me go ahead and just flip this back up and then flip this back all the way around and that is it guys you are completely done with the redstone all that's left to do is clean it up however we're going to make sure that everything is working first so first we're going to go ahead and unlock it boom and now we're going to check to see if this is working so flip this over and it should retract all the way down perfect now we want to make sure that we can lock it from the bottom. So flip down your lever. Everything locked absolutely fine. So now if I try to access it through here, nothing happens. Let's go ahead and unlock it. Now we're going to test to make sure it goes up when we click this back over. It has fully extended back up into its normal state. And now to make sure that everything is working, we're going to relock it with our clock. As you can see, there's the lockout switch. And now if we flip this, it will do absolutely nothing. Now it is time to clean up our build. So first what we're going to do is unlock this. And we're going to drop it down into the bottom of our base. Next, take out your obsidian. And we're going to place in two pieces of obsidian around this entire block. So starting from over here, I like to place in two right here. One, two. Then we can just place a block right here to the side with two here. One, two. And then come over here and you can easily go into sneak mode and place in two more right here. One, two. And then last but not least, we're going to place one more obsidian block right here in the front of this. Now, the reason why we have to use obsidian blocks is because they are immovable. If we have regular blocks next to the slime blocks, they will attach to it and break the build. Next up, take out your blocks for your flooring of choice. I'm going to be using oak wood planks for the top of my floor. So right above these obsidian blocks, I'm going to place in one, two, and then I'm just going to connect them together right here. Now it's time to build our clock. Now I'm going to be using two spruce doors and a jungle door for the front. So, starting from the right-hand side, we're going to take out our spruce door and place in our spruce door backwards like this. Then off the front of the build, we're going to place in our jungle door backwards. And then off the left-hand side, we're going to place in our spruce door. Now, this might happen to you. As you can see, my spruce doors didn't go in the same way. And this is very annoying. If you don't care about this, then you don't have to worry. However, it does bother me. So, to fix this, all you have to do is just place another spruce door right here first off the side of our jungle door. Place in another spruce door. And as you can see, now it's fixed. So when I open it up, boom and boom, they open up the exact same way. And there is our clock. Now, this is optional. You could put wooden trap doors around the tops of it as well. I think this gives it a little more character, but you do not have to do this. I also like to place one more wooden trap door on the top of it, depending on what wall and color you're using. I'm just going to go ahead and put a quartz block right here. But whatever your color is, go ahead and just place another one right off the top of it. And I just feel like that just gives it a little more character, but you don't have to do that. Next up, we're actually going to come to the bottom of the build. It's a lot easier for me. I'm sure you had to dig this area out. We're going to take out our blocks of toys, and we're going to place in two more right here. One, two. Now, I like to not hit my head on the ceiling when I'm inside my secret areas. As you can see right here, I'm hitting my head. I like to bring it down one extra. So I'm going to go ahead and take out some stairs and place three stairs in like this. And next up, I'm going to change my flooring over to oak wood planks. This is completely up to you. You can use whatever colors that you want. You can even leave it a too high one and then just put your lever up here. However, this is how I built mine. So I'm going to go ahead and just add in a few more flooring blocks over here. Some more flooring blocks right here. And then I'm going to swing it this way a little bit more as well, just so it matches. And then we can go ahead and fill in our walling with our block quartz so we don't have to see any of the redstone. Same thing with this side as well. Filling this all in with our blocks of choice. And then, of course, for up here, we can go ahead and fill in this area like this. There we go. And fill in over here as well. 
like that. Now, of course, if you are actually building this on an actual world, I'm sure you had to dig out most of the area and not fly around like I am. And now we're also going to have to fill in right here and fill in right here as well. Then we're going to take out our blocks of choice. I'm going to be using quartz for my walling block. And we're going to go ahead and just fill it in right along here so we can't see any of that redstone behind the build. But there you guys have it. You are now completely done. So what we're going to do is go ahead and bring it back up here. And then we're going to go ahead and lock it out. So there we go. So now it's completely locked so we can't access it. However, when we're ready to access it, just turn it off at 12. Come inside the build if you want to close the door too so to make sure that the door is closed when you go inside of it. Click over this little block right here and we will go down into our secret base. Once we're in our secret base, we can go ahead and close it up behind us by flipping down this lever. And then once we're done inside of our secret base, all we have to do is re-flip up the lever, go inside our build, move that little block over once, and we will be transported back up top like nothing is there. And then of course, lock it so no one can access your secret room. And there you guys have it. That is how you build a secret room underneath a clock in Minecraft PE. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Stay tuned with my newest videos. All right, guys. Boop. Boop. Peace.